The pilgrims around the tower will soon perform a ritual. Demon monsters are watching from the ranks. The sword master, Ray Chang, says that he will drive them all away. The man grasps his sword tightly. The grave keeper, Jork Billmeyer, advances to face the skeletal monster, raising his staff into the air. Maria Jedger says they must stop this ritual at all costs. The night girl swings her deadly sword, but it is already too late. The tower's level changes from 12 to more than 12, and a new raid target appears in the tower. In the distance, a sword-wielding monster with a red cloak billowing in the wind emerges. This strange creature is one of the villains from the fifth season, called the Plague Lord. The goal of this raid is to defeat the Plague Lord. Many who fought against the Plague Lord died without a chance to fight, killed by disease. People retreated, many saying they did not want to die. The Plague Lord said that foolish humans would not be able to escape him, his terrible disease, and his deadly sword would reach anyone and everyone. Finally, a hero with a sword in his hand appears. Everyone shouts that it is him, people know they are now saved. This knight is ready to fight the Plague Lord without fear. Everyone knows that this young king will defeat any opponent and win the battle. He is the hope and support of all the people. The Plague Lord and the young king approach each other and prepare for the deadly battle. The rivals raise their swords high, each confident of victory. The villain shouts how the king dares to attack him alone, and that the hope of all mankind will die alone, drowning in a sea of plague. The king says he cannot yet let others see his power so that no one can uncover his plans. The young man attacks his rival and says that now he does not need to worry anymore. Seeing his opponent's abilities, the Plague Lord shouts that it is impossible. The people watch with hope as the king defeats the Plague Lord. Many turn and decide they must support their defender. The young king has returned and says that he has defeated this cruel monster and now the people are safe. Everyone says that the Plague Lord has finally fallen. Messages appear in front of many people. All players who participated in the raid receive a random equipment card, and the top 100 players receive higher level ability cards than rare ones. The end of the world has been averted once again. The player Kang Yusung, who defeated the season boss the Plague Lord, received the legendary equipment, Black Death, and the title of Lord Slayer. Once again, this world gets one more year of life, all thanks to our hero Kang Yusung, the player who ranked first for four consecutive seasons, who has the best achievements in the tower, has the highest level and superior equipment, abilities, and more achievement points. He is a hero among heroes. A young man sits at a table in front of a microphone, he is the king of heroes, Kang Yusung. A family sits in front of the television, a girl with a Kang Yusung toy says that Kang Yusung is on TV. The whole family is happy. People on the street say that Kang Yusung has returned to save everyone. Merchants sell shirts with pictures of Kang Yusung. Ray and several players from around the world return to save the world. The speaker asked Kang Yusung, as the representative of all the heroes gathered here, to say a few words to the public. The young man did not want to speak. Maria Jedger asked him to say something good even though he was reluctant. After all, the audience hoped he would speak. Maria Jedger repeated her request and mentioned that they were being broadcast on television. The girl asked him to look at the camera and smile. The speech took place in the interview room at the Unforum in Geneva. Hundreds of millions of viewers were glued to their television screens tonight. In this room were the top 10 players of the season. Viewers wanted to know how they heroically risked their lives to make history by saving the world. Kang Yusung decided to introduce himself, saying that he was trying to make money. The audience was shocked, and surprised expressions appeared on their faces. Maria Jedger looked at her colleague anxiously. The young man said that for a long time, he had only been interested in money. Season 1, The End of the World began. One day, the world turned into a game. Towers of various sizes began to appear all over the planet, blocking the sky. People looked at them in horror. After some time, bloodthirsty monsters started emerging from these towers and destroyed everything in their path. Everyone thought it was the end of the world. There was no way to escape from these monsters. People suffered and died, but there was nothing they could do. One day, a man appeared in the middle of the crowd. He was a young man with a sword in his hand. He protected the people around him and started fighting the bloodthirsty monsters. The young man, holding his sword tightly, protected a girl who was almost crushed by the monster. He faced the bloodthirsty creature, his sword and clothes stained with the enemy's blood. Besides this young man, other players also appeared who hunted and destroyed the monsters. The monsters began to be defeated for the first time. All these protectors had unique abilities and became the guardians of the people. People began to regain hope for the future. Since then, the world started to live by new rules. This became a new starting point. The heroes realized that the tower invasion could be stopped. The phenomenon of monsters emerging from the towers could be halted with preventive attacks. These bloodthirsty monsters were vulnerable, no matter how terrifying and invincible they seemed. These monsters could always be defeated if the towers were attacked at regular intervals. This is what the new players with superpowers and the ability to attack the towers did. These brave people became the heroes of the new world. 
Hero King repeated that for a long time, he had only been interested in money. The audience wanted a revelation, and they got one. Kang Yusung said he did it for money, which is why when the audience went out for a walk, he offered to sell t-shirts and posters with his image. The young man read comments about his appearance on the internet player forum and was surprised. Was it really possible to express oneself like that on the forum? The player community in the country formed on its own as the world gradually turned into a game. This community was called the Player Forum, where players shared information about attacks and exchanged items. Kang Yusung anonymously sneaked into the chat room and wrote that the Hero King was not worthy of respect because he chose money, but others immediately recognized him as the King of Heroes. A journalist kept corresponding with the young man, asking him to join his team next season and even arranging a meeting out of curiosity to see what the King of Heroes was like in real life. The young man approached the window and looked down, a crowd of journalists was waiting for him. The reporters scrambled to get a photo of him, and the young man thought he couldn't hold back any longer. Kang Yusun left the house and the journalists swarmed him, asking for comments about the new season. They said that his items were banned worldwide and asked for his opinion on the matter. The young man stopped and decided to answer a few questions. They asked if he had always been motivated by money and if this motivation would remain in the new season. Kang Yusung said that the stars on television were drunkards who only caused trouble, yet they managed to accomplish something. The young man looked into the camera and said that he was ready to entertain the public and he was very good at it. The journalists were shocked, wondering how to understand his words and why he made such sensational statements. The sixth season had begun, The Endless Maze. The reporters looked up and said that towers were being built, with 96% of them already active. Players could enter the active towers after reading the information on the door below. Soon, dungeons would appear, and flying towers would approach the ground, requiring attention to their height. Since the announcement of the new season, towers had appeared everywhere, one had to raid these towers to protect the world from destruction. Amid the chaos and confusion, Kang Yusung disappeared into the crowd, wearing a hood and vanishing from the journalists' view as they were distracted by the towers. Flyers were scattered on the ground, from the King of Heroes, announcing new products and t-shirts with his image. The navigation showed that the young man had arrived at his destination. The young man knew the city well. Kang Yusun looked around and thought that not even the rats were left, as if all living creatures in the area had perished. The young man thought that the first day of the season was always quiet, everyone was looking around and assessing the situation. Most rulers were happy to see the artist, the clown from an, the iron ruler laughed heartily and blessed those who refused his sword. The ice ruler smiled and blessed those who carried mirrors. The man said they could keep laughing. The game reported that the ruler's compatibility increased significantly after their blessing messages. The young man thought that all this was not in vain today. And then in the unroom, he said that he had been striving for money. He repeated that for a long time, he was not interested in anything but money and encouraged people to buy t-shirts with his photo. He did everything to earn rewards from the enlightened ones who called themselves rulers and observed the players. According to the game, the golden ruler and the legend laughed hysterically and gave blessings. Those who chose the legend would have greatly increased luck in the game for three rounds, with one round guaranteed to have a legendary level reward with 100% probability. Kang Yusung did everything possible to maintain his title at the end of the season. The young man had unlocked an appropriate reward, a legendary object. The legendary object turned out to be a black cloak with gold trim. This cloak was given to a very loyal knight who was in danger from an attack by a Galia elf. Kang Yusung thought that with the power of the legendary protection object, a heroic level artifact, he could now enter the tower. The young man wore his artifact and fearlessly headed into danger. He had to prove his abilities in the new season with renewed spirit. Kang Yusung entered the Tower of Blood Moon along with the orcs. This was the third level. Here, participants expected endless battles. The goal of this raid was to defeat the boss of the Blood Moon Tower on the last floor. There were five floors in total and the number of players allowed was four. Kang Yusung decided that this was the time to test his heroic level abilities and try out the functionality of his artifact. The young man activated the Ice Sword creation skill while he waited for the formation of ice crystals from which the Ice Sword was made. When using this skill, players cannot equip other weapons. The young man had created the Ice Sword and its compatibility increased. He gained the additional effect of cold breath. The hero thanked the Ice Lord. Armed with the Ice Sword, Kang Yusung began fighting the monsters that inhabited the tower, using both his sword and his artifact, the cloak. The hero dealt significant damage to the monsters that outnumbered him. Kang Yusung successfully cleared the current level. His stats had increased, with strength, agility, and intelligence each rising by one point. His skill card level also increased. The young man cleared the ground floor, and the game recorded his progress. He had advanced to the next level. Kang Yusung decided this was a good start and declared that he would try to save the world again. The game reported that the young man had entered the first floor here with a higher difficulty level. 
Kang Yusung saw the bloodthirsty monsters feasting while their guards were off guard. It was an advantage for him. The young man appeared and said he was ready to fight. The orcs shouted that the warrior had arrived. This was the one who would send them to Valhalla. The orcs decided to fight and die with honor. Kang Yusung told them to wait for him and asked them not to spread out. The young man jumped and shouted that he would show them what heaven looked like. He swung his ice sword and began to destroy the enemies with his slashes, mutilating their bodies. The game showed that Kang Yusung had entered the fourth floor. The young man thought it was good that his level had increased, but it was difficult for him to fight without respawn. As he advanced, our hero realized that the guards were blocking his way to the commander's room. Their strength was unbalanced. Kang Yusung saw the well-equipped orcs and thought this was a good way to show who the elite warrior was here. The game commanded the orcs to fight honorably and die. The Iron Lord blessed the guards. The guards shouted that the Iron Lord had given them his blessing. They were not afraid to sacrifice their lives for their commander. The orcs shouted that Valhalla awaited them and advanced towards the warrior ready to send them there. The hero king stood fearlessly waiting for the approaching enemies. The guards shouted that they were almost singing a song of blood and singing for their iron master. Kang Yusung thought that the guards wouldn't let him catch his breath. So, he swung his ice sword again. His cloak, as an artifact, perfectly fulfilled its protective function. Kang Yusung, steadfast as always, defeated his enemies despite their status and equipment, constantly increasing his level and abilities. At the same time, he did not suffer much damage. Kang Yusung thought that these elite warriors had resistance to ice kai energy, and that had to be considered for future attacks. He used his wits and physical abilities to avoid direct confrontation with the enemy. He evaded enemy attacks nimbly and made unexpected counterattacks. After evaluating the situation, Kang Yusung thought that now he had to deliver a precise deadly blow, but he still did not have adequate capabilities. The Hero King remembered that he had received a legendary object as a bonus. With these statistics, his equipment was almost on par with a semifinalist. Additionally, they also added heroic level abilities and artifacts. From a safe distance from his enemies, Kang Yusung decided to open the additional inventory. He received the Ice Heart. This heart provided glacial synergy to the team and increased resistance to Ice Kai energy. Kang Yusung became very nervous, he did not know if he could handle it because he had never faced something like this before. It could not be used by anyone who did not possess ice magic. The guards below began to draw attention. They shouted at their opponent to come down and fight because those who fought dishonestly would not enter Valhalla. One of the guards, without waiting for the enemy to approach, threw his axe with all his might. The axe sliced through the air and sped toward Kang Yusung at high speed. He deftly avoided the weapon. Kang Yusung thought that now was not the time to hesitate. He decided to immediately implant the artifact. The game showed information that the heroic level artifact Ice Heart had been implanted. Kang Yusung immediately felt the powerful energy of cold magic. Glacial synergy was acquired. The effects of the ability cards equipped with ice attributes were enhanced. This effect reduced the protagonist's vulnerability to the guards. Kang Yusung felt filled with magic and all the fatigue vanished from his hands. Who needs a golden spoon when there's an entire cave of gold? He said. A belligerent orc shouted that war would come and end in war. The consequences for the guards were predictable. Without stopping for a second and without time to rest, Kang Yusung launched into the attack with renewed vigor. Using the achievements he had obtained, he destroyed his enemies with greater spirit and advanced toward his goal. The result was predictable. All the guards struck by the ice sword were disabled and destroyed. The game announced again that Kang Yusung's level had increased. It showed that once again he had gained the ability to destroy more and stronger enemies at the same time. After another level up, the sword in our hero's hand changed. His sword became bigger and stronger. Now every strike with this sword increased the efficiency and damage to the enemies. The guards turned into ice structures when Kang Yusung's sword touched them or their armor. The game again informed that the protagonist's level had increased, further enhancing the effectiveness of his actions. The young man was now wielding two swords simultaneously. With these weapons, he fought skillfully and effectively parried enemy attacks. Once again, Kang Yusung's level increased in the game. The young man was getting closer to his goal. With each improvement in his abilities, the difficulty of reaching his goal also increased. The orc guards holding the warrior back grew stronger and stronger. The game reached a point where after every effective sword strike and defeating his opponents, Kang Yusung leveled up. The young man was tireless, no matter how large his opponents were, Kang Yusung could handle them with just a few sword strikes. His weapon was like lightning in space. After clearing the zone, the young man decided he had completed another floor. He waited for the game's message about it. To proceed to the next level, the system remained silent, the young man thought he might have missed something and there were still enemies somewhere on the floor. Out of the corner of his eye, Kang Yusung noticed an orc sneaking up from behind. Our warrior had to deliver the final blow. The young man victoriously thrust both his swords into his opponent. 
The system reported that the level had increased in the protagonist past the elite floor. For completing the mission, Kang Yusung received a special reward of a set of random ability cards and 1,000 achievement points. The young man decided to open the game. Kang Yusung was somewhat disappointed because he only received an ordinary additional ability. The young man hoped to at least get a legendary ability after such a battle. Our warrior received the ordinary ability Punalata Trapra, which temporarily increased his physical strength, allowing him to stab his opponent. The young man thought it was better than nothing and equipped this ability with the blessing he who has surrendered to his sword, which greatly affected the ability card. The young man entered the tower on the next floor, where he was greeted by a girl who said she was glad he was still alive. Kang Yusung greeted his interlocutor. The girl said that as long as he was alive, she could sell many of the items she had, so it wouldn't be profitable if he died now. Our hero's interlocutor was the owner of the automatic shop. She asked how many achievement points the young man had earned and reminded him to spend them at home before dying. The shopkeeper offered to sell a deck of cards and said she might have a legendary deck. Kang Yusung said he was interested in speed and fire potions and might buy them. The system deducted 300 achievement points for this purchase, which was then added to his inventory. The girl didn't stop and asked Kang Yusung to buy at least one deck. The young man covered his ears with his hands and said he couldn't hear her. The system reported that the protagonist had entered the boss floor. The boss, sitting on his throne, said it was time for the decisive battle. The head guard shouted at the young man to fight with honor and die. However, the protagonist had other plans. By protecting himself with an ice ball, he also attacked his opponent. The young man thought he was fighting a giant in front of him, not an orc. Kang Yusung decided to use the fire potion he had just obtained. The space around the guard's head was filled with flames. At the same moment, the orc shouted Valhalla and jumped out of the fire, trying to attack his opponent. The orc couldn't find his opponent and shouted, where is he? The young man silently approached from behind, preparing his ice sword to strike. The young man attacked his opponent. After this attack, the orc's body began to be covered in ice, freezing, and losing mobility. Our hero thought that with blessings, even low-level abilities could become very useful. The guard's leader said that it wasn't over yet and he wouldn't give up. The king was a hero and would not stop fighting because he knew he would get more bonuses by defeating the boss. The orc leader, the Blood Moon Singer, activated Berserk Mode, which significantly increased his attack and armor abilities. The young man said that if this game was easy, he might get bored. Now, he could show more spirit. Kang Yusung activated a new artifact. Now he had a powerful ice shield in his hand, ready to deflect all his opponent's attacks. The opponent struck the ground with his weapon, creating a very powerful shockwave. The young man was certain that if he didn't have the ice shield, this wave would have taken him out. After waiting for his opponent to run out of breath, the hero king launched his counterattack and disabled the boss's guards. The boss floor was cleared. The system reported that the protagonist had captured the Blood Moon Tower with the orcs. He received a reward for clearing the tower in the form of a set of item cards. The young man received a special achievement as the first conqueror. The effect of the speed potion began to wear off. The set of item cards randomly gave cards of normal or high rank. The chosen attribute was the best reward that could be obtained on the third floor tower. The young man decided to open a set with ice attributes. The young man felt frustrated again because what he got was a common card, an ice arrow. The dissatisfied hero thought that this game kept making cruel jokes on him. The level 3 demon worshipper tower allowed 16 players. The hero king appeared at the edge of this tower. He was surrounded by demonic creatures who decided that there was an idol worshipper in the tower who had to be destroyed. The hero king activated the achievement he received, which was an ice arrow. These arrows were enough to destroy the approaching monsters. The young man had no trouble dealing with low-level demons. He said that he greatly enjoyed enhancing his abilities. The level of the ice arrow had been increased. The hero king realized that he couldn't relax because the second wave would start soon. The villains were on their way. The tower's inhabitants surrounded our hero and said that he was the demon king and they wanted him to send them to hell. The young man didn't care. He raised his sword and told everyone to line up because hell was where he would send them. After another successful operation to destroy the enemies, the young man leveled up again. The level of the ice arrow and ice sword also increased. The young man realized that the tower boss had appeared, an occultist demon. The boss said he intended to offer his rival's blood to the demon king. The boss ordered his followers to attack the hero king and destroy him mercilessly. The system reported that the demon cult was affected by the freezing effect, which was very useful. The young man quickly applied this effect to his opponent and thought it was a good thing. There would be opportunities to learn various skills. The system reported that the glacier synergy effect increased damage and projectiles. The hero was interested in knowing the maximum number of ice weapons he could create. The hero king created several ice weapons and used them to attack his main opponent. The villains could not withstand all his attacks. The system reported that the main hero had defeated the demon cult. 
a message appeared indicating that the protagonist had cleared the demon worshipper's tower and received a random equipment card as a reward. The young man opened the card and received silver lats. He already had legendary items, so these lats were useless. The hero king thought that the ice sword did not lose its power even if it was divided into several parts. He did not feel any difference as long as it was not more than eight. The system issued a new task, the protagonist had to meet his shadow. One of the factions in the tower was very interested in him, a special event, namely a faction meeting. The world of the tower was full of various factions. The hero could join any faction, receive tasks from it, and get better rewards. Members of the council faction in the shadows said they remembered this mortal human. One of the partners asked if the young man wanted to join the faction. This could mean certain bonuses for him. The council in the shadows thought this was not bad since he had already cooperated with them in the fifth season. The young man said he wanted to make a deal right now, but there were more than two ions ready to fight against them. The negotiator from the faction said they were ready to accept the young man, having forgotten how strong they were due to past cooperation. The young man said he remembered everything, which is why he wanted to negotiate with them. The negotiator asked what he wanted. The young man thought that with just words, he would not get what he wanted. Kang Yusung said he needed a shadow beast. The young man added that if he made this negotiation, he wanted to request another rare card of dark abilities. The negotiator told the young man not to overestimate himself, he was still the same foolish human in this world, and humans were pathetic creatures. Kang Yusung said they could leave and never meet again after all that had been done, they couldn't even offer that. The warrior turned and prepared to leave the faction. The negotiator stopped the young man. The young man smiled and thought he could get away. The young man looked around and saw a demon beast with a predator's gaze approaching him. It was a cat. The system reported that a shadow beast had been received. The protagonist received a special achievement, Meow. The warrior also received 100,000 achievement points. The young man petted the shadow beast and said it was a good boy. The deal with the faction was complete. The protagonist also received a rare shadow blade card. The negotiator asked if he was satisfied. The young man said he was happy with everything and that he had joined the faction. The system reported that the protagonist had joined the faction. The council in the shadows, relationships with factions increased. As he left the tower, Kang Yusung thought that this season would be promising for him. The young man wondered if he should continue while everything was going well, weighing the options of leaving what you have versus sticking with it to minimize risk. Someone called Kang Yusung. The young man turned around and thought, here we go again. The young man was surrounded by reporters. The reporters mentioned that Kang Yusung had visited two third-level towers on the first day of this season and took first place. Everyone wanted the young man to share his impressions, he was a highly capable person and an outstanding player. Someone noted that the sword master from China had gone to the fourth-level tower, and the players were more active in this season's raid. Kang Yusung wondered if anyone had really entered the fourth-level tower. The young man asked who was with him. There were five veterans from the Chinese Communist Guild with this warrior, but four of them were already dead. Kang Yusung thought, who thought to give him the nickname Sword Master, given his ability to use other warriors as living shields. The reporters asked Kang Yusung if he really meant to say that the Chinese knew what awaited them. Someone said that the Sword Master had just entered the fifth level tower. The young man asked how many people accompanied the Sword Master this time. They replied that the Sword Master had gone alone. 